Goals of Science. The learning objectives for this section are describe the three goals of science and give an example for each, and distinguish between basic research and applied research. The broader purposes of scientific research in psychology. People have always been curious about the natural world, including themselves and their behavior. In fact, this is probably why you're studying psychology in the first place. Science grew out of this natural curiosity and has become the best way to achieve detailed and accurate knowledge. Keep in mind that most of the phenomena and theories that fill psychology te textbooks are the products of scientific research. In a typical introductory psychology textbook, for example, one can learn about specific cortical areas for language and perception, principles of classical and operant conditioning, biases in reasoning and judgment, and people's surprising tendency to obey those in positions of authority. And scientific research continues because what we know right now only scratches the, the surface of what we can know. The three goals of science. The first and most basic goal of science is to describe. The goal is achieved by making careful observations. As an example, perhaps I'm interested in better understanding the medical conditions that medical marijuana patients use marijuana to treat. In this case, I could try to access records at several large medical marijuana licensing centers to see which conditions people are getting licensed to use medical marijuana. Or I could survey a large sample of medical marijuana patients and ask them to report which medical conditions they use marijuana to treat or manage. Indeed, research involving surveys of medical marijuana patients has been conducted and has found that the primary symptom medical marijuana patients use marijuana to treat is pain, followed by anxiety and depression. And this is from a study by Sexton et al. in 2016. The second goal of science is to predict. Once we've observed with some regularity that two behaviors or events are systematically related to one another, we can use that information to predict whether an event or behavior will occur in a certain situation. Once I know that most medical marijuana patients use marijuana to treat pain, I can use that information to predict that an individual who uses medical marijuana likely experiences pain. Of course, my predictions will not be 100% accurate, but if the relationship between medical marijuana use and pain is strong, then my predictions will have a greater than chance accuracy. The third and ultimate goal of science is to explain. This goal involves determining the causes of behavior. For example, Researchers might try to understand the mechanisms through which marijuana reduces pain. Does marijuana reduce inflammation, which in turn reduces pain? Or does marijuana simply reduce the distress associated with pain rather than reducing pain itself? As you can see, these questions tap at the underlying mechanisms and causal relationships. So number one, we just wanna describe what's happening. Number two, we like to use that information to try to predict future events. And number three, we also like to try to explain why people exhibit certain behaviors. Now, basic versus applied research. Scientific research is often classified as being either basic research or applied research. Basic research in psychology is conducted primarily for the sake of achieving a more detailed and accurate understanding of human behavior, without necessarily trying to address any particular practical problem. The research that we talked about at the beginning of this chapter by Mel and his colleagues falls into this category. They were simply trying to understand, do women talk more than men, or do men and women talk similar amounts? It's not a particular problem they're trying to address. They're really just trying to understand more about human behavior and to be more accurate in that understanding. Applied research is conducted primarily to address some practical problem. Research on the effects of cell phone use on driving, for example, was prompted by safety concerns and has led to the enhancement or enactment of laws to limit this practice, right? So probably when cell phones became a lot more popular, they noticed 
Um, there were a lot more car accidents or incidents involving cell phone use. And so they did research on that to try to identify whether that was the case. And thanks to that, we now have new laws in place. Although the distinction between basic and applied research, research is convenient, we like to think of them as these two separate types of research. But in practice, it's really not always clear cut. For example, basic research on sex differences and talkativeness could eventually have an effect on how marriage therapy is practiced. And applied research on the effect of cell phone use on driving could produce new insight into basic processes of perception, attention, and action. So these two things are often intermingled. They don't necessarily work in silos. <laughs> 